it is 10 40 p.m on a saturday night and i literally climbed out of bed put clothes back on and went down to record this video because i am so fired up about the issue that i'm going to tell you about today why does free sky hate tiny whoops is the title of this video and that's a little clickbaity, but it's a little not because if you own tiny whoops like this Mobula 65 or this Meteor 6 or a Tiny Hawk or any quadcopter that has a non free sky, free sky compatible receiver in it, you are going to be mad. Free sky has broken compatibility with third party receivers. I'm Joshua Bardwell. And you're going to learn something today. You're going to learn that I'm a loser who goes to bed at 9 o'clock on a Saturday night and then climbs out of bed at 10.30 because he can't get to sleep because he's thinking about making this video. Here's what we're going to need to make this video. This is my good old Tyrannus X9D. This has the old ACCST protocol chipset in it, the one that was used for so long before FreeSky released Access with their new ISRM chipset. You don't need to memorize this. There's the old stuff, that's ACCST. There's the new stuff, which is Access. This is the FreeSky X9 Lite. And we're also going to test with the Jumper T16, which has a third party FreeSky compatible. D16 module in it, but it's not actually officially licensed by FreeSky. And that has been one of the things that has made FreeSky so powerful and so popular. It's that other companies have reverse engineered their protocol and released compatible receivers. Like, for example, these tiny whoops I showed you earlier in the video. This guy doesn't have a discrete receiver. The receiver is built into the flight controller and in beta flight you let me show you the receiver type is not serial receiver where it talks to a discrete receiver through a uart it is spi and that means it's built into the flight controller but freesky doesn't like it that third parties are making compatible receivers and third parties are making compatible modules freesky doesn't like this and they're trying to make this not happen anymore and there's some collateral damage that is happening along the way. And that's what we're going to dig into today. Now we're going to need to get different firmwares for these radios so that we can test the effect of the different firmware versions. So uh, I'm going to go to products on FreeSky's website. I'm going to go to Tyrannus series. And I have the Tyrannus X90, Tyrannus X90 Plus SE. Download, download page. Now I'm showing you this process because there are a whole bunch of different FreeSky radios out there and it's not always clear to the average person which firmware is the right one for your radio. So I want to show you the easiest way to find that is to go to the FreeSky's website, go to your radio's product page, and then go to the downloads page for that radio and that'll guarantee you you're looking at the correct firmware. And what we specifically want is the firmware XJT here, which is the firmware for the built-in XJT radio module. And what I want is version 201. And now I need to get that firmware onto the SD card of my radio. And probably the easiest way to do that is to turn the radio on, plug in to the USB port, and select USB storage SD. And in the zip file, we've got an EU and a non-EU version of the firmware. I'm not in the EU, so I'm going to take that one. I'm going to drop it in my firmware folder here on the SD card. This is the Meteor 65. It is in D16 mode, and it is an SPI-based receiver. This is the Mobula 6. It is an SPI-based receiver in D8 mode. And this, of course, is a FreeSky RXSR in a quadcopter just here just to provide power. And right now... It's a fact that all of these will bind to my Jumper T16. And all of them will bind to my good old X9D. That's just, we don't even really question that, so let's not waste time on that. And we also know that the X9 Lite, which is an access radio, does not and will never support D8 mode, so it will not bind to this guy, because this guy's in D8 mode. But will it bind to this guy in D16 mode? Let's find out. Green light blinks. 
we are bound. We have RSSI, we are bound. And the X9 Lite can also bind to the RXSR. That is no problem, but I'll just prove it to you. Bingo, blinking light. Telemetry Boom. recovered. Boom, okay, so that works. Now FreeSky have released a new firmware version, ACCST version 2.0 and it has what they call an essential bug fix for receivers. So let's say that we conscientiously update our RXSR to the new ACCST version 2.0. Let's see what happens. We're gonna plug the servo plug into the bottom of the X9 Lite here, and long press menu, page, firmware folder, and we're gonna choose the RXSR ACCST V201 firmware, long press, and flash S port, that's how you flash to this plug down in the bottom. And when we do that, we should see, there we go, it is right in the firmware. Now we've got the latest and greatest on our receiver. Let's see how that affects things. No, no dice. So that means that FreeSky has not yet released an update for their access radios that is compatible with firmware 2.x of their ACCST receivers. And it also will no longer bind to my Jumper T16, which cannot and will never support the new ACCST 2.0 protocol. So what FreeSky have done here is created a schism. D16 mode is no longer just D16 mode. There is pre 2.0 D16 and post 2.0 D16 and ne'er the twain shall meet. But that's okay, because if I've got an older ACCST radio like this X9D, I can just update the firmware for it to the new ACCST 2.0. So here we go, XJT ACCST 2.01 FCC, long press, flash internal module. Be back in a minute. We can bind, and that's great, except I cannot bind to any of my other quads that have a pre 2.0 firmware on the receiver, including this guy, which will never have a 2.0 firmware on it because that would require FreeSky to open source the way their encryption works and they will never do that because that's their whole freaking point of making this firmware. Watch, let's go into bind mode, binding and ready. Nope. Solid light. It will not bind. It will never bind. What effect has this had on our ability to bind to D8 models? Good freaking question. Here's my D8 quad. Has the new ACCSD 2.0 also broken my ability to bind to D8? I sure as frick hope not. But let's find out. Okay, we are in binding mode here in D8 and ready. It is binding. Okay, so D8 is at least still okay. So here is how all that shakes out in case you weren't following along with all the ins and outs. If you have one of the newer FreeSky radios like the X9 Lite or the X Lite Pro that has the access protocol built in, you are fine if you are using receivers with access protocol, of course. And if you're using receivers with D16 protocol, do not update those receivers to ACCSD 2.0 because you can't bind to them. Presumably, FreeSky is going to release a new firmware for the access radios that supports ACCSD 2.0, but they haven't done it yet. If you have an older radio like a QX7 or an X9D that has the ACCST chipset in it, and if you update to ACCST 2.0, you will no longer be able to bind to older D16 receivers that are on a previous pre 2.0 version of ACCST. Now that may be fine if all of your receivers are RXSRs and XM pluses and you can just update them to ACCST 2.0. But if you have any receivers that are like crazy B flight controllers in your whoops, they cannot and will not and will never support ACCST 2.0. So FreeSky has put you in a really weird place. Either 
you forego the bug fix forever and you never update the firmware on your receivers again and you're fine and you can just continue using all your quads as you do today. Or if you update your module to ACCST 2.0, you can never as far, I can't see any way that FreeSky would ever let Betaflight build support for this new ACCST 2.0 protocol in because to do that, they would have to open source it and then everyone would know how their encryption works and then they, people would be able to reverse engineer it, which is exactly what they don't want to do. So it seems to me like with FreeSky is basically saying, sorry, you have to use external receivers on all of your tiny whoops from now on. You have to put an XM on there or something like that or some receiver that supports this new protocol. And by the way, if you have a third party radio like the Jumper T16, you can keep using tiny whoops forever because of course Jumper is going to keep supporting this protocol just like everyone always has. But if you have any of these new ACCSD 2.0 receivers, they will not bind to your Jumper and Unless someone from Jumper somehow figures out how to reverse engineer this encryption, then they never will. So, this is a really, this is a really shrewd business decision that FreeSky is making. And from customers' perspective, it is a really shitty decision. FreeSky has been trying to do competitive things that end up being bad for their customers ever since they nerfed the QX7 to break the, the, you know, the inverter mod that you have to do on QX7s in order to use Crossfire. It didn't used to be like that. The very first generation of QX7s didn't need the inverter mod. FreeSky did that and they broke Crossfire compatibility and any reasonable person would assume that they did that intentionally to make people choose R9 over Crossfire. They did something that was bad for their customers in order to give themselves a competitive advantage. When they released the access program, protocol, it did not, those radios did not support D16 and they do not currently and never will support D8. There might be a good reason not to support D8, but not supporting D16, again, feels like a competitive decision that they made. If they got so much backlash over that, that they built D16 into their radios and now here they are at it again with ACCST 2.0. Once you go past that threshold and you are on the ACCST 2.0 train, you can no longer bind your tiny whoops unless they have a discrete receiver, which none of them do. So if you're a happy FreeSky customer, I'm glad I could help educate you about how to try to keep all your stuff working. And if you are thinking about becoming a FreeSky customer, I have to say, why? This is a load of crap. Why would you opt into this ecosystem where there's 17 different firmwares and there's 27 different and who knows what's compatible? And I'm only making this video because I, I'm getting so many questions about this. I can't bind my Beta 75X to my FreeSky radio. And I'm like, well, what works and what doesn't? And now I know and now you know. But God, why not just get something else that just works and just sidestep all this garbage? I guess I'm not getting any more free FreeSky products ever again. Once upon a time, I had a falling out with a vendor and somebody said to me, if you keep burning these bridges, you just keep burning bridges with vendors. And they said that as if I'd done something wrong and I needed to be apologizing. But if making videos like this burns bridges with vendors, then unfortunately, that's just how it is. Because... This is just a below to BS, and uh, anybody who isn't willing to call it that, they're the ones who are screwing up. Happy flying, everybody. Now, now, now I can go to bed. Happy flying, everybody.